Welcome to the Providence College Podcast. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. If you like what you hear, please review and share with others. Email podcast at providence.edu with questions or comments. Go Friars! Hello and welcome to the Providence College Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Chittam, and I'm joined as always by producer and videographer, Chris Judge. Here at the Providence College Podcast, it's our pleasure to bring you interesting stories from interesting people from inside the Friar family. And today we are fortunate to have 2014 and 2016 grad Teresa Feaster here with us. Teresa, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I'm going to get into your bio real quick and then we'll get it going. Teresa, uh, you were a student manager with the men's hockey team while you were a student here, and then a GA, and now the coordinator of men's hockey operations. That is uh, quite a lot to take on, especially for a student. And you know, Chris was a student manager as well for men's basketball when he was when he was uh, an undergrad. And I know people who've had that job before. It's a lot. You know, it can take a lot of time. So for you, kind of what was the? I I love talking about your your bio. We'll get into it in a second. But why did you end up making the move? into the student manager role when you were a student here at PC? Well, I was actually really fortunate. Um, I, I grew up around hockey. I knew that I wanted to try to, to have a profession in, in the game. And uh, the summer before my junior year, I actually met Coach Lehman at the NHL draft. And I asked if, if he would have a role as a, as a student manager or something like that. And I'm very fortunate that uh, he said yes and, and brought me on board and, and things kind of progressed progressed from there. And that's a pretty interesting place to meet somebody who you who is on campus <laughs> at the time where you're currently on campus. You obviously are at the NHL draft was not which is not held at Providence College. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, why were you at the draft? And if you could go into a little bit, you said you grew up around hockey. What what do you mean exactly? Yeah, absolutely. So I was attending the draft. My dad at the time was the, the general manager of the Calgary Flames. Uh, and the draft, I, I really enjoy going. Um, was something that I did a lot as a kid. Um, my dad worked for the Hershey Bears in the American League um, and the Tampa Bay Lightning as well. Uh, so it was kind of in my blood, I guess. I was always at the rink, uh, always talking hockey with him, watching hockey with him. Um, and just over the years, the draft was one of those things that I really enjoyed uh, typically, most teams, you know, they kind of get their scouting staff, uh, amateur and professional, together for a week or ten days beforehand to really get everybody in the same room and kind of delve into it, get their list finalized. Um, and I just always found those meetings really fascinating, and and I loved kind of being in the thick of it. So uh, attending the draft is always kind of a highlight for for me and. Uh, I was very fortunate that in 2012 I, I met Coach Lehman. So you got to sit in on some of the pre-draft meetings that the, that the Flames were having. Yeah, I, I mean, growing up, I was always kind of a a, a fly on the wall or, or just trying to take in as much as I possibly could. And I'm very fortunate that my dad recognized my passion and and definitely allowed me to to observe. And and he was always a really great sounding board too. You know, he would always asked me my opinion. And, and so we had a lot of great conversations growing up about hockey. I mean, we still do to this day. We, we're, we're always talking either Friars hockey or NHL hockey. And um, it's, it's a passion we share. And, and I think that's, that's really cool to have somebody, uh, somebody like that that you can, you can always kind of rely on and talk to about that stuff. I can imagine. So at what age did you start getting involved? Honestly, as long as I can remember. Um, you know, when I was, when I was, very young, uh, we were in Hershey, and and my dad would take me down to the rink, and I have vivid memories of, you know, being down in the coaches' offices and listening to to them talk strategy or players or, or that kind of thing. Um, my dad took me on a on a road trip to uh, Adirondack when they had a team there, so I was on the bus and hanging out with the guys. And so, the rink is always some place that I've really felt at home. Um, it's always felt like. Uh, it's a very comfortable place for me. It's some place that I love being, um, you know, love talking with coaches and, and just being in that environment. So I really, to answer your question, as long as I can, I can remember, really. So for you at a young age, were you kind of there by choice or was it more of like, hey, your dad, who's Jay Feaster? Right? Yes, yes. Or did he, had to just, did, did he just have to take you along as part of like his parenting duties? Or was it <laughs> you like kind of begging him like, hey, I want to go, I want to go? I don't know. It may have started that, you know, he had to get me out of the house. I don't know, give my mom a break. But um, certainly from my perspective, it was something that I always wanted to be there. 
Um, I was always like, can we go to practice? Can we go to, can we go to this? Can we go to that? So, um, and as I said, he, you know, luckily for me, he, he, from a very young age was, uh, very supportive of that and, uh, really allowed me into, into his world. That's remarkable. I think a lot of times you see parents who can work in professional sports, even high level college sports as well. It's a very time consuming profession. So to have that opportunity to, for, for you to ingratiate yourself in that, it kind of provides an opportunity for you to see more of a parent than I think most kids would, right? Who, whose parents work in that field. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, certainly for me, those, those hours at the rink, um, you know, those were great bonding experiences and, and they're memories that I'll have forever. So I think absolutely. Now, did you play hockey as a kid? I didn't. Um, I, I really never played the game, um, at least not competitively. Uh, I was just kind of, I played other sports, but I never really played hockey as a kid. That's interesting because you had a, a passion for it and then didn't play. So what was that like in terms of, in terms of making those decisions about what, what sports to play and which ones not to, not to suit up for? Yeah, you know, I don't really know how it happened. I mean, I spent most of my childhood in in Tampa, and so I just sort of played what my my friends were playing, and and I mean, we played street hockey all the time, but it wasn't really something that I, I wanted to be doing. What my friends did, I, I wasn't necessarily wanted to play hockey, but I did like being at the rink with my dad, and I guess it it grew over the years that this passion. But uh, yeah, I never I never really got into into playing. Right, but then you end up coming to PC. All right. So what was your thought process in terms of why, why was Providence College the best choice for you at that point? So I, probably like a lot of kids, I didn't, I didn't have a really good idea of where I wanted to go to school as, as a high school student. Uh, so went on a sort of a college tour, I guess, with, with my parents. We went all over. It felt like uh, seeing every, every school. Um, and, you know, I liked some places. This is OK. That's OK. But the moment I stepped on campus at Providence, uh, it, it just felt different. It, it felt like this is, this is where I want to be. Um, and then I came back to visit a second time just to sort of see if that feeling was still there. And every person I met just made me feel like this is the, this is the spot. This is where I'm going to call home for the next four years. And, and in my case, uh, I haven't really left. <laughs> So you were a history major here at PC and then got your master's degree in history as well. So when you were making the college choice, was that at the forefront of your mind or did you have an eye towards hockey at that point? Yeah, I actually came in undeclared. I didn't really know what I wanted to study. I had a lot of interest, so I liked the fact that it was a liberal arts school so I could kind of take some classes and and figure it out, I guess. Um, I did know I wanted to get involved in hockey. Um, but I didn't really know how he was going to go about that exactly. Um, and it, it really is a, 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 for, a fortunate uh, coincidence, I guess, that I did meet Coach at, at that draft. Um, but I, I chose history because I, I really liked it. I had taken sort of, I guess, one of all the social sciences trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and uh, I, I really found that history sort of was the, the one um, I took – History 103 and 104 with Dr. Andrews, and uh, he, he sold me. So I guess he, he gets the credit for that. <laughs> All right. So your junior year, like I say, leading into your junior year, you meet coach at the draft, and then you, you get it going. So that's 2012, right? Yeah. So when you come on as a student manager, what were some of the duties that you were responsible for, and how much of a time commitment is it for a student manager to be involved in a team like that? So when I was a student, I did uh, a lot of the – the video work um, for in-game with uh, tracking time on ice and player shifts. And it was something that Coach had talked about that he wanted to sort of start start this uh, uh, project up, having player shifts available to them to watch after games. So that was kind of the way that I first got involved. Um, And then it sort of, it built into a bigger role. I started filming practice and um, started taping uh, recruit a uh, film from different online sources and, and sort of breaking that down. Uh, so I sort of dove right into the video and I really, I found that I really liked doing the video. I liked doing all the breakdown. Uh, so that kind of, and it's video is one of those things that you can always be doing more. So that was, it was great for me because I was able to sort of continue to, to take on more responsibilities and, and, and more projects. Yeah, and Coach Lehman mentioned that, actually, and it was the uh, New York Times article that came out this past February 
uh, where you were featured and you kind of came to came to be known to the, I think the, the broader Friar community at that point. I think people on campus knew you, you were a student here and you were you know, kind of a, a member of the team as well. But that article, and then there's another one in the Promise Journal that came out as well that you know, highlighted your efforts uh, with the hockey team. And it was, um, I think you mentioned how being a, a proactive member of the staff, especially when you're kind of a junior member of the staff, is so important because there's so many things that the head coach is worrying about that trying to make sure that you're, you're having enough things to do is kind of like the last thing they're considering. <laughs> yeah. So having someone who's proactive in the role uh, is vital. In, in that. So is that something that you knew instinctively or is that something you kind of maybe learned from your dad in terms of how to approach that position? I don't know if, if I knew it really that I was doing it, but um, I think selfishly, I just wanted to be more and more involved. So I, I was trying to find kind of things that I could sort of dive into and, and try to come up with stuff that's useful, helpful to, to a coach. Um, it's certainly the video is a big one. Um, something that I also sort of took on was was sort of getting into the advanced stats a little bit. Um, it's something that's sort of more and more NHL teams are, are using those in their in their daily decisions and personnel and all those all those kind of things. So I thought that that was something that maybe I could I could bring to the table if if I got involved in in that. And so I'm very fortunate that. You know, they let me do all these projects, and I'm sure some of them were, were not very helpful. But uh, you know, I was able to to sort of gain confidence from that too, and that I was able to work on all these projects and stats and video, and uh, hopefully bring something useful to the table. So, what are some advanced stats that you were trying to highlight for the coaches and for the team? So, I actually, I've been working with um, our assistant coach uh, Chris Mayot a lot in this past year. Um, our our volunteer Jim Tortorella. Uh, we were trying to come up with some some stats that maybe we can use to help ourselves in evaluating. So sort of we're trying to build off of things like um, a big one in the NHL right now is Corsi, which is basically a, a shot-based metric. Um, and so we're trying to sort of model those to our team, uh, maybe things that we find valuable, things that maybe are underrepresented in other statistics. Um, so sometimes we come up with something and we track it for, for 10 games and we look at it and go, that wasn't very useful. <laughs> um, and then other times I think we find something that, that maybe does add, add a value. Uh, I think certainly the thing with stats is, is they are what you make them. Um, I, I don't think that we'll ever get to a point where you can just make decisions based off of pure numbers, but I do think it adds an objectivity to something that uh, can be valuable to coaches that they have sort of a data point in front of them and they can they can use that as as they as they see fit right and i think the advanced stats uh genre as, as you mentioned before we came on it's kind of been part of baseball for a while now yeah. but other sports uh the nba and nhl are two among them that are kind of uh, really trying to get into this more often at the same time it sounds like you're trying to kind of figure out which stats might work best so when you're kind of doing a little trial and error in that regard how are you tracking some of these stats? Are you doing in game, live in game, or after the fact? A little bit of both. I'd say for for things that we we know are kind of tried and true, we're tracking those live. Uh, we're we're keeping those on a daily basis. Uh, for things, that are certainly on my end, things that I'm trying out, uh, I, I tend to do those after the fact, and then and then see sort of okay over this ten game period, what did this show? Did it show anything? Um, and I think. That's sort of how you, so, and then you can make adjustments and tweaks, obviously, um, and then and try to figure out if, if these are actually helpful metrics or not. Right. And then there must be a, a kind of a line of demarcation between having a small sample size and having enough shifts or ice time to determine whether or not a stat for a, a particular player or, or a specific position is actually useful. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do think that's one of the big reasons why, um, Corsi, that the, the shot-based metric has been so popular in, in hockey because shots, it gives you a, a, a much bigger data point than, than anything else that we necessarily have. So, I mean, there are some limits. Um, I'm not a mathematician either, so I won't pretend to, to know all the intricacies of, of, uh, of advanced stats, uh, but we do what we can and, and we hope that uh, it, it helps us somewhere down the line. Um, having that objective data point, maybe, maybe it helps with the, with a lineup decision or, or something even smaller than that. 
So during the during the season, what does your day look like? Say it's uh, the, say two days before a game, you're filming practice, right? So that's part of your daily duty that day. What does your full day layout look like? So during the season, uh, it's a, it's a lot of the video, uh, trying to make sure that you know all of our our opponent pre scout type. Uh, film is available, broken down for, for our coaches. Um, you know, they all do different aspects of that. Um, so so let's dive into that. So oh, what, yeah. is, what does that mean exactly when you say it's broken down and it's available for the coaches? So what like, available like on what platforms? And you say broken down, how would it be broken down? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a, a video editing software, basically, uh, it's called Sports Code. And that allows us to have all of our video files uh, in a in a system that we can easily sort of tag and have different clips available. So um, it's very user-friendly. We all have different uh, ways that we like to, to break down games, um, different tags that we put in it. Uh, and so I, I would say all of us really watch, you know, the same, the same film, but we have different things that we're looking for and that we tag. Uh, and then it all goes onto a central server in our office uh, that, that we can easily access and, and pull down and, and have clips available, um, you know, to show to players or, or we can watch them in the office together. Um, so, so our video system is, is really great. It's, uh, it's definitely one of the things that, um, as a part of the, the renovation at Schneider, they did an unbelievable job with the, with the video system there. So when you're tagging, whether it's a game or practice, or you're, I'm assuming you're tagging like what player is involved what's happening on the ice. So is that all just like real time, like you're pressing buttons while you're watching the film? <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, you know, mo- it's mostly systems um, for, for things like that. Uh, so we just have sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, some buttons uh, in, a, in a code window, we call them. And yeah, you just, they're attached to keys and you, you sort of sit there and you watch and, and you, you press the different, the different uh, keys that activate the, the system and then it's all organized for you in a, in a nice file. Got it. So it must take a long time to get used to knowing. Now, so you have to be kind of two things going on at once. So you're you're watching and analyzing, and at the same time trying to figure out and remember exactly what you're supposed to be coding in the moment. How many times do you have to go through the film to make sure you get it quite right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny you say that. Um, I think it's one of those things that repetition and practice, it's just it's almost second nature. Uh, I was really nervous about that when I first started. Am I going to be able to watch and do this um, video editing as as I go along? But it's one of those things that you, you just kind of learn, you know, enter is this and space bar is that. And, and then I guess it's almost like typing. You know, you just, you don't really think about when you're typing. You just, you just instinctively know. Um, so you just kind of watch the game and, and you, you may stop it here and there if you see something um, really interesting. But, you know, you're just sort of watching it watching different systems maybe you are watching players um but it, it's it's almost second nature now to be honest with you so the clips that can, the clips that can be accessed i guess they're, they're by tag so you can do certain things that are tagged and then you can queue them up in the system so are do the coaches look at them and the players or is it more of a coaches situation yeah absolutely coaches and players um i think video is such a big part of the game now um i mean it's just Every team uses video. It's it's just all across the board. And our players have, I think, really grown up using and having video available to them. Um, so I think that they, you know, they use that as a resource just as much as, as we do. Um, and we have a great system available for them that they can all have access because of the server. They can all have access to those those clips really any time uh, that they that they want them. Um, they can watch themselves, obviously, in in our games uh, because we have their shifts broken down Um, they can you know if they're a center and they want to watch opposing centers for face-offs you know they have those clips available Uh, we record practice so I know a lot of them watch practice so it is something that I think the players use as well as the coaching staff and I would assume that being able to see say I'm putting myself in the position of a player being able to see myself doing something, say, incorrectly or correctly would then allow the coaches to really ingrain that in, in, the, in the player, right? It was, is it that tool kind of allow the coach to say, hey, instead of me just telling you what you need to do, being able to see it must allow them to really kind of, uh, I guess, you know, break, break a certain habit or reinforce a certain habit that you want to keep? 
I think so. I mean, certainly for myself, I'm I'm a much better visual learner. If I see something, I, you know, it it, it kind of sticks. Uh, so I, I'm sure that's that's the case for for many of them. And um, certainly, too, vic- video is is uh, obviously very objective. You know, <laughs> you you can't change what's on the video. So uh, so that's that's a, something that uh, they see, and I guess we all can kind of analyze it. Right. And what do you do from an NH- I know you do some NHL packages as well. Try to bring them to to the players um, from a skill set improvement standpoint. So what does that involve? Yeah, I think that's that's a ton of fun too because I mean you, you're watching NHL players. They're they're obviously the best in the world at, at, at what they do, um, and and so it's a lot of fun to watch these games. I mean, we just had a, an unbelievable Stanley Cup final. Um, being able to watch those guys, so you know, I'll pull as many games as I can, put them into our our video system. Um, I know some guys they have maybe somebody that they want to emulate, so we might pull more of of that guy's team um or perhaps it's a it's a system hey we really like this breakout hey we uh what's this power play doing you know let's watch this let's pull that uh so you know just just as another resource really for for both our our players and coaches that makes sense i can see that helping a lot of people as they uh as they want to improve and at the same time it feels like there's like you mentioned an endless array of things you could be doing with this video different ways you could chop it up or different things you could look at whether it's self scouting whether you're looking at you know how the practices are going or how a recent game might have played out or just scouting your next opponent right i mean how do you um i guess balance the amount of time they spend watching the video versus you know some of the other skill development they could be doing and or how much they self scout. This is the players in mind. Self scout versus look at the the future opponent. I mean, I think that's that's part of our our routine, I guess. Um, you know, coach has done an unbelievable job of of establishing. This is okay. Mondays we're gonna do this. Tuesdays we you know we, we have a, we have a schedule. I mean, it's not set in in stone. Obviously, there's growth and change, but uh, I think. I think the guys know what they need to do in a given week to be to be best prepared. They know, okay, Monday we're probably going to look at ourselves and and see how the weekend went, and then we're going to close the book on the weekend. And then this whole week we're going to prepare and we're going to get better. And then we're going to pre scout obviously our opponent, um, show some clips, be prepared for that. But you know when Friday night comes, we've prepared in a way that that we're that we're ready to go. That's that's the goal at, at the start of the week. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now, in the article last February, there was a great quote at the beginning from the New York Times article. It says, last fall, Teresa Feaster and Brittany Miller became the first women to serve as full-time members of NCAA Division I men's hockey coaching staffs. Now, that is obviously a a big deal for a lot of people. Yet, for you, you always kind of not downplay it. I think you're you're telling the truth. You say, it's just not an issue for me. So how do you square that by being someone who is, in a way, a trailblazer in a certain respect, yet at the same time, like you don't view it as that big of a deal. How is it, you know, kind of keeping both those things in your head at the same time and kind of balancing them out, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it is it is the truth when I say it. Um, I, I mean, I feel very, very fortunate that, obviously, I, I know that it's a, it's something that's not very common, uh, Brittany and myself being, being the first women, but uh, it's from day one, I've just been a member of the staff here, and... Coach Lehman's never treated me any differently. Uh, I've never felt sort of outside pressure or anything like that. So for me, it's just kind of a, I'm going to come to work today and, and do my job. And, and I don't really think think too much about it, to be honest. Was it something you thought about in the beginning? You know, when you were a student manager, was it a hurdle you had to cross? Or was it simply that given your background and since you were three years old, this was just <laughs> part of your life, that it was ne- never an issue in any way? I mean, I, I think before I, I became involved, it was something that I thought, oh, is, is someone going to give me a chance? Um, do I, how am I going to prove that, that I know what I'm doing? You know, maybe, maybe from that standpoint, I thought that it might be, be an obstacle. But um, as I said, you know, coach didn't really hesitate. He, you know, he brought me on. And, and I, and I kind of, I guess, in the back of my head, I thought, if somebody gives me a chance, I can prove myself and, and I can show that that I know that I know what I'm doing and, and that I'm passionate and that I'll work hard and that, you know, I, I, I want to be in this world and, and that I think think I can do a good job. 
Right. Well, it sounds like you are doing a good <laughs> job uh, by all by all accounts. Now, have, has anyone ever gotten in touch with you who kind of want to follow your footsteps in a way? Another female trying to enter the men's hockey ranks? Um, it, I mean, I'd be very flattered. Uh, um, not necessarily, um, but, you know, that's uh, <laughs> I, I don't really think of myself as as someone that that's a, a mentor. But um, obviously, if that came up, you know, I'd be happy to, to help out. Well, in terms of getting over the initial hurdle of, like you said, you know, once you once you get the opportunity, it's just about making the most of it, you know, doing a good job and, you know, getting the respect that you know, people who do a good job deserve. And with that in mind, if someone were you know, to ask you that question or they're thinking about it, you know, in terms of their own potential career path, what kind of advice would you give to you know a young lady who was considering kind of going down the same path that you that you've gone down? I mean, I'd say that. From my standpoint, uh, hard work is really something that I've always tried to allow to, to speak for itself. Um, I think that if you have passion for something and, and you're willing to really just put your head down and, and work hard and, and produce something that's, that's valuable uh, to a staff, I, I think that that's, um, that's sort of something that uh, you can control, certainly. Um, there's obviously outside factors that, that, you, that might be out of your control, but but your passion and your work ethic are things that, that you can control on a daily basis. Right. So what's up next for you? So this is a, your first full <laughs> season is, is in the books. What's the summer look like? And what is, you know, as, as you kind of, you know, try to progress, you know, through your, you know, postseason type stuff, then get into, I guess at some point it goes from postseason to preseason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right now, just, uh, just trying to get some of our travel squared away for, for the year, the upcoming year. Um, we'll have guys back on campus in July for, for summer school, uh, which is always, always exciting to, to kind of get, get those guys, especially the freshmen, you're meeting the new guys and, and getting ready, uh, for the, for the upcoming season. And then, and then by, uh, by September we'll, we'll be rolling and, and that's certainly exciting too. Now, did they participate with the coaches on ice during the summer? No. So, um, they, they kind of do their own thing. Um, NCAA regulations, um, doesn't doesn't permit us to uh to have coaches work work with the guys in the summer but um they can skate at different camps and events and and things that are on their on their own got it and why would so if they can't work out with the coaches why is it nice to have them on campus in the summer before the you know, traditional semester begins yeah especially for our freshmen it, it's great um they come they come for the month of july and they're they're able to take a class here and kind of get oriented with campus and different members of of the staff like outside of the coaching staff that they that they're going to interact with on a daily basis they get to know them they get to know the campus they sort of get that uh taste of college i guess um before they're they're thrust into the middle of a season as well um i think it just helps with the with the transition a little bit um obviously they're kind of going 100 miles an hour when they when they get here so um, they, they at least have a little bit of that uh, behind them, so, sort of the learning behind them a little bit. Right. No, that makes sense. And then you also, um, I guess once July ends, you have the traditional you know, late August move in and then the, you know, the, the orientation for all students as well. Do they, part- do they participate in that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, the, and they're just as much a part of the student body as anybody. So I'm, I'm sure they're, they're excited to get to know all the all the people on their on their halls and and just like every student is right well hey thank you so much for joining us this is a fantastic story um you know as we were talking before before we got started it's just not very often that you have someone who has a parent in professional sports and they you know start to follow in those footsteps and uh obviously it's still very early in the process for you uh in terms of being a you know a member of you know the, the hockey life in terms of a professional career but it certainly is very, uh, very exciting, and hopefully, uh, you know, the next couple of years are just as successful as the past few years have been here for PC Hockey. Thank you. I, I, ho- I hope so, too. <laughs>